Smoked cheese, pepperoni sticks, or salami, mac nuts and dried fruit, pemmican. That right there, guys, is like 2,500 calories if you can believe it. Guys, this is for all you backcountry hunters or other backcountry adventurers that are into Joe Rogan, Sean Baker, fat eating, meat eating, carnivore diet, paleo diet, keto diet. It's not gonna be for everyone, but if you're into that, you're gonna love it. This last week I was up in the Idaho wilderness and I did a whole meal plan based on sticking to my carnivore, keto-esque, paleo-esque type of diet. It's essentially 65% fat, 20 to 25% protein, and the rest carbohydrates, so fairly low carbs. I did a backcountry diet that conformed to that macronutrient profile that I've been living in my day-to-day -day life. I just put out a video, it should have been out a few days ago, that covers what I call the three different phases of optimizing your diet for the backcountry, okay? That's essentially the calorie deficit phase that we most folks live in and deal with for a while before they realize that trying to, you know, losing weight on a hunt is a very bad thing. And then the second phase is where you get to where you're actually meeting your calorie needs during your hunt or other backcountry adventure, but just because of the change in the types of food you're eating and the nutrient profile of the food you're eating, you end up with stomach issues and energy volatility, right? So that's stage two. And then stage three is that you actually match the foods that you're taking on your backcountry hunts to the macronutrient profile that you have at home. In this video, I'm gonna go over the carnivore specific diet that I used these last seven, day, seven days. I had no gastrointestinal issues, no stomach issues, no energy volatility, slept well, it was awesome. Felt like I was just at home on the exact same diet. For you guys that have struggled, and most backcountry folks who spend a lot of time in the field, they do struggle with diet, you guys will see that that is a great goal to achieve, all right? So I'm gonna go through the details here, the nitty gritty guys, you know, what I ate for lunch, what I ate for dinner, what I ate for, for breakfast, the other little packing intricacies that I do. Now, if you wanna see a video version of this that covers a more standard backcountry meal prep where it's more carb heavy, you know, we're talking about kind of the inverse of the macro profile I'm showing here. I have an older video, you can check it out here. It goes over how I pack for that. We'll give you a bunch of food ideas and it'll go over the same concept of how I pack food, okay, for these trip so that'll give you the other end of the spectrum they actually both work pretty well if you match that nutrient profile of what your body's used to at home all right let's just nerd out with the numbers real quick guys here's my cheat sheet all right boom maybe i'll put an article up on pursuitwithcliff.com a blog article that goes over this it's just a, generally what i do guys and what's on this paper if you can't see it is i've got my breakfast bag so well let me back up here a little bit when I go on a backcountry hunt, and this, this could be a hunt where I'm backpack hunting or a hunt like the one I went on last week, I wasn't really sure, okay? We were gonna hunt out of a cabin some of the time, potentially backpack some of the time, maybe just one overnight, you know, maybe two or three days in the field, whatever. But even in those situations, you still gotta pack your meals, all right? So I use the same strategy. So what I do is I pack a breakfast bag, I pack a lunch slash snack bag, and then I pack a dinner bag. So I have three bags for each day in the field, and then I usually put those in a bigger bag, a jumbo Ziploc bag, all right? In my breakfast bag, there's roughly 600 calories, okay? There's a couple little hygiene things in there that I'll cover that make life easy for me. You might find them goofy, but they're in that breakfast bag, I'll go over that. But in terms of the food, you've got roughly 600 calories. My midday bag right here, guys, this bag right here, the vast, vast majority of the calories. We're talking 2,500 to 2,600 calories per day depending on the foods I put in there. I do add a little variation just because what I find if I vary those snacks, I'm more likely to consume all those snacks and keep out of the dreaded calorie deficit that I talk, in that, talk about a lot in that earlier video. And then my dinner bag here uh, is 300 calories. And then let me grab the, the, the trick of the trade here. This is the daily jumbo bag that all three of these will go into, okay? And that's a daily 
daily bag for each day of your trip. Makes planning easy, all right? So that's a total of 3,600 calories. I'm about 160 pounds, six foot guy. I roughly add 20% to the calories I burn day to day. Now at home, my day to day calorie burn is fairly high. I'm a high, I would say I'm highly active uh, with a bunch of other hobbies I have and everything else. If I'm eating 3000 calories at home, I'm not gaining weight, okay? So 20% more, we're looking at 3600 calories. That's pretty much what I have here. You can adjust it to your needs. There's tons of calculators online, guys, that'll give you roughly what you're gonna burn every day. You wanna eat, 20 to 25% more than that on a rigorous backcountry trip, a hunting trip, rafting trip, climbing trip, whatever, 20, 25% is what you're gonna end up at. If I actually consume these calories, what I found over my years of guiding is for every seven day period, I'm gonna lose like less than a pound, okay? Consistently about a pound, right? The reality is if you're in the field a lot during a season, that still can be a problem. If you're a 160 pound guy and you guide and you guide and you guide, and by the end of the deal, you lose 10 pounds, it's still significant. For other folks, it'll vary. But just to get a feel for it, guys, each trip you really wanna lose less than a pound, pound and a half, basically 2% of your body weight. You don't wanna lose more than that during a trip, or you're gonna run into a lot of those calorie deficit issues that I talk about in that other video. If you have no clue who I am, I don't blame you at all, guys. I spent the last decade or so outfitting and guiding some of the most remote wilderness areas in North America. I've dealt with more than a thousand clients in that context. All I'm showing in these videos is what worked for me and my clients. I'm just talking about that data set, and I hope you guys get some value from them. If you do, please like this video and subscribe to the channel, and Get on my newsletter at PursuitWithCliff.com and stay in touch with me that way. But anyways, guys, let's, uh, let's jump to the next step, actually breaking down these bags so you can see what I put in there and what works for me. Right here, we've got the breakfast bag. All right, this is my morning high, kind of hygiene bag. I stick in each one of them. You're going to make fun of me. My guides make fun of me about it. But you know what? I take my vitamins, so I put them in this little bag. Let's see, two fish oil pills and a vitamin D. And then I have one of these disposable toothbrushes. These things are awesome, and I keep it in here, so I brush my teeth, throw it away in the morning, done with that part of my life. Two coffees, instant coffees, and a wet wipe. On the coffee front, I like instant coffees. These little Starbucks ones are fine here. The one thing I don't separate into each little bag, and it's because it can create a little bit of a mess, is cream. So I actually use Anthony's Dehydrated Cream for my coffee, and it, it adds quite a bit of calories to the coffee. I'm, I use an ample amount of it. I mean, I'll put a full, big, lumping, lumping tablespoon in one of my coffees, okay? All right, guys, the other thing I got in my breakfast bag is pre-cooked bacon. Costco has it. You can pre-cook it yourself. There's lots of different options. I eat four slices of it every morning. The other thing I've been uh, taking is this is like, ganache is probably not, not the right word for it. Actually a commenter in one of my previous videos, I wish I knew his name right now, I would mention it. He gave me this idea. It works pretty well, but it works best in a cool environment. It's roughly 50% dark chocolate and 50% butter, okay? And then I just, wrap it in a parchment paper. It's pretty high calorie and it's pretty darn tasty stuff. It's easy to eat, okay? So it's a good breakfast uh, food for me, but if you're in a real warm environment, figure something out. Maybe some more bacon or some other kind of breakfast food that you can make. Um, but this is this worked for me all right, other than when it got a little warm, I had to basically set it somewhere where it was gonna cool down and then it'll solidify again and then it's perfectly edible, but that's a little bit of a challenge. So that's it for the breakfast bag. I got my hygiene stuff, my coffee, my, my little uh, dark chocolate and butter mix and bacon, and that's breakfast. Um, you know, one thing just to note guys is I put quite a bit of cream in that coffee So that's kind of part of my breakfast too, but like I said, you're looking at like 500 calories There are a lot of those calories is from that dark chocolate butter mix So one thing that's really nice about this setup guys the three bag setup is the breakfast meals I don't have to have them with me in my backpack right unless I'm moving camp that day if I'm backpack hunting I can leave those at you know, at the kind of little backpack base camp, all right? So I can have those, I don't have to carry them around. And same thing with the dinner pack. I don't necessarily have to have that with me. I can leave that back at camp. But what I do carry during the day is this midday, you know, snack lunch pack. And the way I've configured this, and this is part of the reason why there's so many calories in here, is I can figure it so 
that pack will actually get me through the night if I'm working on an animal into the wee hours of the next morning or something like that. That pack will actually have enough calories to get me through the night, no problem, without struggling, feeling like I'm gonna bonk. There are elements of this midday pack that typically I actually end up eating with dinner. But there's enough in here to get me through the night if I need, need to, all right? So in this case, with this carnivore-esque type of, type of profile, I'm eating a lot of pemmican. This is a thousand calories of pemmican, if you can believe that. Anybody who bitches and whines that if they're on a you know, fat-centric, you know, carnivore-centric diet, they can't get enough calories per ounce, you, you're going to have to do a little work and make some pemmican, okay? I've got a video on it. Check it out. It's really good, guys. Um, and what I'll do is I've actually got a short video on a trick on how to cook this if you don't find it super appetizing. I actually ate a lot of it this last week. Never gave me a stomach problem. Never gave me any issues. Kept my energy up. And I actually had a lot of guys around me test it. A lot of guys liked it. I mean, matter of fact, I didn't get a bad comment about it the whole time. The thing about it is you have to realize that when it warms up, it does get a little greasy, okay? That, that tallow on it does melt a little bit and you're just gonna have to deal with that. I was really worried about that and I thought I was gonna be making this video or making a review video of pemmican and saying like, guys, I love it. It works for me from a nutritional standpoint, but I can't deal with it in terms of just packing it. Well, actually it was a lot less of a pain in the ass than I thought. In these little vacuum packed bags, guys, it's easy, right? Just cut this open and then you can, just, you can just peel it out of there. And yeah, it's a little greasy, but just lick your fingers. No problem, all right? So that's pemmican, guys. 1,000 calories of that in, in the middle of my pack. Generally, what I found is I would eat like half of this midday, and then the latter half I was eating at night or snacking on you know, other times during the day. But this is kind of you know, lunch slash dinner uh, pemmican, all right? So I had that. And then I had just some uncured salami or pepperoni sticks. The other, I mixed it up with these. These are store-bought ones, obviously. These guys, they make good ones. And then, I, or I just had this, another store-bought kind. Here's where I cheat a little bit, okay? So, I have macadamia nuts in here. Macadamia nuts are super high in fat, um, and I like them. I'll eat them almost under any conditions, all right? But I do like them with a little dried fruit. So, I've got some dried figs in here and some dried pineapple. That's where I'm cheating a little bit on the diet. That's where a lot of my carbs are coming from. But I'll have a bag of this stuff to snack during the day. Macadamia nuts or some other high fat nut and some dried fruit. A big block of smoked cheese, all right? And I go over how I package this in my smoked cheese video. That's either going to be already out or coming out sometime soon. I've got a whole stack of videos on this stuff that that'll be coming out here, trickling out. If it's not out already, it will be out soon, guys, so subscribe to the channel. But anyways, so I packaged this smoked cheese in 600 calorie blocks. So this is 600 calories of smoked cheese. I did different variations. I did some pepper jack, I did some Monterey jack, so I could vary it day to day. But that's 600 calories of smoked cheese. And I take a goo, really just for the caffeine kick, guys. I take the goos that have caffeine in them. Here you go. I take one of those. I don't always eat it. There are 100 calories in it, but it just kind of depends on what's going on. If, if I don't have a real opportune time to sit down and eat these other calories real quick, sometimes I'll just buy me a little time to when I'm getting to the next glassy spot or whatever and I can really consume some calories. But I stick that in there too. Smoked cheese, pepperoni sticks, or salami, mac nuts and dried fruit, pemmican. That right there, guys, is like 2,500 calories if you can believe it. At the end of this, I'm gonna weigh all this. I think you guys are gonna be surprised. I got to a number in terms of calories per ounce that's just as high as all your standard backpacking food out there, all right? All the carb-centric stuff. I got just as high with this type of food, okay? So don't worry about weight. All right, so dinner, in addition to part of that pemmican I was typically eating, right, and part of that cheese, I just had an extra little snack. So, what I put in my dinner bag, another chunk of the ganache, okay? So this is the butter slash dark chocolate mix, all right? 300 calories of it right here in that wax paper, parchment paper. You can see some of that butter's already on there. It's pretty good stuff. For dinner, I always eat some O smoked oysters in pure olive oil. From what I've found is you can't find smoked oysters in the grocery store in pure olive oil. And honestly, guys, it sucks, 
but smoked oysters and pure olive oil are way more expensive than other oysters. These oysters are running like a couple bucks a can. So basically, I got the 300 calories of ganache and the, ol and the olive oil uh, drenched or floated in whatever smoked oysters in the can, and then I'm eating any remaining smoked cheese or pemmican from my, from my midday bag, okay? So that's dinner, and then of course, another disposable toothbrush. So that's a wrap on what I ate, guys. Like I said, worked out perfectly. A little bit of a bug on the ganache there in terms of it melting, but that matched my carnivore-esque, keto, paleo type of macronutrient profile, all right? What I just showed you is 3,600 calories, roughly. It's 70% of those calories are from fat. Roughly 20% of those calories are from protein. Which, which is around 180 grams of protein, right? You get from that. And then the rest are from carbohydrates, right? So 70, 20, 10 is essentially the macronutrient profile of that, that bag of food. And here, I'm gonna show you what it weighs. All right, guys, so if any of you guys have foods out there that fit this type of diet and they're good for backcountry hunting or other backcountry trips, for all you nerds like me who are into this whole carnivore, high-fat diet deal, please let me know in the comments, guys. I'm kind of looking for some more homemade options to mix in here, particularly during warm, warmer weather. I kind of brainstormed some new ideas. One of them, uh, me and my buddy talked about on this last hunt, and that is the pemmican otter pop. Hmm. Dude, I, I do like the otter pop idea though. That's not a bad idea. Just because, because it, see how hard it is for me to eat it? Like it's it's just kind of a mess. Mm -hmm. You got, right uh, here. See, it's and a little bit of a like mess. Packable, I mean, easy to, to carry around, light. Well, what I'm thinking of doing is like, you can vacuum pack, you know, you, you can cut your own vacuum pack bags, like just cut them short. Mm -hmm. You know, and then and then when you eat them, chop the top of it off and then squeeze it up like an otter pop. I think that's freaking genius. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. Want some more? I'm sure you guys have other great ideas to fit with this diet, so please let me know in the comments so everybody, including myself, can get value from them. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks, guys.